Burlington House, Piccadilly. And once again, the summer exhibition of the Royal Academy of Arts opens for the appreciation of those in search of beauty. Weeks before the opening, artists arrive bringing their hopes for the approval of the selection committee. For the summit of every artist's ambition is to see his or her masterpiece hung on the line in this exclusive gathering, for only the best work survives the critical eyes of the judges. And here's the selection committee at work. Fifteen royal academicians, each skilled in his own branch of the arts, judging well over 10,000 entries for this year's exhibition. Included in the total were 900 pieces of sculpture and architecture. With such an immense program before them, the judges must of necessity rely upon an instant decision, though very few works of outstanding merit are rejected. Behind the scenes, the office staff begin the unwelcome task of sending out rejection notices. To have a picture included in this rejected pile often inspires the artist, they say, to even greater work. One rejection notice was sent on behalf of the lying in state of King George VI to Mr. Frank Beresford after nearly half a century of Academy approval. Now let Sir Alfred Munnings, past president of the Academy, express his views on modern art through a letter from a critic. There is only good art and bad art. Whether ancient or modern does not matter. Very few men of genius are born in a century, but I read now a fresh one every week. And here's one of Sir Alfred's own contributions this year. The last selection over, the entries, nearly 1,600 of them, receive final attention before meeting the critical gaze of the public. Here are some of the canvases. The Death of Nelson by John Minton and Edward Halliday's wartime portrait of the Duke of Edinburgh. A view of Ottawa proves the versatility of Field Marshal Earl Alexander. The intricate scale model of the new Coventry Cathedral by Basil Spence is another outstanding entry in this great exhibition of modern art. <laughs> 